Hey everybody, today we're getting back into bat. Look up on top of that hat. Look what's up there. You see that guy? What if he took a bite out of his head? Ugh, that would have hurt. Chapter 15, Head Tilt and Sniffles. It was Jenny. She burst through the door, her hair wild, her face wet with tears. She seemed surprised to see Bat standing there, but she repeated, Something's wrong with baby cakes. Is baby cakes your pet, dear? Suzanne said from behind the counter. Baby cakes is our class pet, Bat said. His head began to buzz as if it were filled with angry bees and his stomach twisted. Suzanne, go get mom. Suzanne stood up from her desk and disappeared into the back. Lawrence left too to take Pumpkin to the kennels. As older lady pushed through the door, an older lady pushed through the door, she held baby cakes wrapped in a towel. Bat could see thick streams of mucus coming from the rabbit's nostrils and noticed that baby cake's head was sort of flopped over to one side. Is the vet available, said the lady. Maybe she was Jenny's grandmother. Okay, I'm back, said Lawrence. What seems to be the problem? Bat felt a grateful wave of relief that Lawrence had come back so quickly. It's baby cakes, Bat said. Jenny was crying loudly now. She dropped down onto the vinyl bench and had her head in her hands. Lawrence stretched out his hands. May I? He asked. The lady, who was probably Jenny's grandmother, handed him a bundled up bunny. She's had a cold for a couple of days, but we thought it was just a case of the sniffles. And then this morning, she was holding her head funny, tilted to the side like that. Lauren took baby cake. Lawrence took baby cakes and held her gently. Hey there, little lady, he cooed. Bat came up close and peered at the bunny. He could only see her head since the rest of her was swaddled tightly, but he noticed that Baby Cake's eyes looked kind of dull and watery. A bubble of mucus grew out of her left nostril. I shouldn't have let you be Baby Cake's caretaker, Bat said. Jenny cried louder. Let's focus on the patient, Bat Boy, said Lawrence. Lawrence was right. Here I am, said Bat's mom emerging from the back, followed by Suzanne. Hello, baby cakes. Feeling a little under the weather, are you? She's congested, and her eyes are watery, and she's tilting her head to the left, Bat said. Okay, said Mom. Let's take her to the exam room. Lawrence led the way, but followed. His mom had dropped her arm around Jenny's shoulders, and Jenny sniffled and hiccuped and wiped her eyes. The lady, who was probably Jenny's grandmother, brought up the end of the line. It was a very crowded exam room. Lawrence set baby cakes down on the metal exam table and unwound the towel she had wrapped in. She was wrapped in. He kept a hand on baby cakes back to keep her from hopping away, even though baby cakes didn't look like she wanted to hop anywhere. Mom had taken her stethoscope out of her pocket and placed the ear tips in her ears. She pressed the other end, called the bell to Baby Cake's side. She would listen to the bunny's heart and lungs, but knew. Bat knew. He couldn't help with the listening, but he could pay close attention to Baby Cake's condition. He noticed that Baby Cake's fluffy coat was smooth and well-brushed without any matting or tangles. That meant that Jenny 
had been grooming her every day. And it was hard to tell without holding the bunny. But it didn't look like Baby Cakes had lost much weight, if any. And her paws were clean, which meant that Jenny had been keeping her enclosure nice and fresh. Bat's mom took the stethoscope off and placed a back into her, her pocket. Her lungs sound clear and her heart is strong, she reported. Jenny's parents are out of town and I've been taking care of her and her brothers for the last few days, said Jenny's grandmother. We didn't notice anything wrong with the bunny until a day before yesterday when she started to look like she had a little cold. And then this morning when we went to feed her, she was doing this funny thing with her head. So we brought her right in. Jenny kept crying. Rabbits don't get colds, Bat said. Bat's mom shone a light into Baby Cake's eyes. Her head was still tilted. And when the light hit her left eye, the one on the low side of her head, she didn't blink. They don't get people's colds, but they do get respiratory infections that can look like a cold, Bat's mom said. It's called the sniffles. <laughs> Lawrence still stood with her hands, gently holding baby cakes. The bunny was so fluffy that his fingers disappeared into her fur. Bat's mom lifted baby cakes right ear and shone the light inside. Ah, she said, it looks like the sniffles has caused an ear infection. That's what's causing the head tilt. Bat, Jenny, do you want to take a look? Bat did. He walked over to the exam table and peered into Baby Cake's ear. It was red and swollen looking. Is she going to be okay? Cried Jenny. Bat's mom turned off the light and stroked Baby Cake's tilted head. I think she'll be fine, she said. We'll keep her here for a few days to monitor her and start her off on a course of antibiotics. She'll need eye drops for her left eye too. She won't be able to blink that eye until the head tilt resolves. Bat was right, Jenny said quietly. I shouldn't have been one, the one to take Baby Cake's home. It's my fault she's sick. Bat looked again at Baby Cake's smooth, tangle-free coat her clean, unstained feet, her nice, plump body. You are a good caretaker, he said. You've taken good care of baby cakes. Jenny wiped her eyes. They were red and swollen, and her nose was dripping. Baby cakes' coat is brushed, and her feet are clean, and she's been well-fed, he continued. It's not your fault she's sick. Jenny took a deep, ragged breath. And then she smiled. Thank you, Bat, she said. That's nice of you to say. I said it because it's true, Bat answered. That's the end of chapter 15. All right, next. Next chapter is called House Call. We'll catch up tomorrow. See you later, alligators. <laughs>